Yeah, you know, one thing that was good about Frontier Village, it was really a good training ground, and you guys taught us stuff, and we learned stuff, and and Joe wanted us to learn things to make it efficient. We didn't have a lot of money, so we had to make sure the customers got served fast and properly and good, and that we didn't waste a lot of labor, we didn't waste garbage bags, you know, tying the bags, getting the right thickness of garbage bags for the picnic area so we weren't breaking bags and double double bagging. It was better to have a little heavier bag that we paid more for to begin with, and then they didn't break when we, we hauled the garbage out, rather than some amusement parks just use, they buy the light bags, but then the guys have to double or triple bag them. So, I mean, we learned tricks like that. We went to... Um, where did we learn that sign trick? We, well, Lori Hollings always talked about that, but we learned it out of one of those Southern California parks. We went into a restaurant, and, and Joe and I were, were the second person back. There's a person, person in front of us at the food counter. We're the second person back, and we're young people then. Our eyesight's good, and we could not read hamburger hot dog. And so until you got up, and then you're leaning over the counter looking at it, but it was all themed and was written in small print, and... Joe right away. Is that for me? It's beeping. Joe just blew up. Time to change the stakes. Oh, I'm going to stop. Okay. To be continued. So are we uh, starting again? Are we live? Are we Memorex? We are live. Okay, so the signs. So Joe discovered that, you know, we, we, we've got to make sure that signage is large enough so people can read it from a distance. And what cemented part of that were two things. Number one... We um, went to Great America uh, one day after it opened. You know, there was a time when Frontier and Great America were still open. And we went on a recon trip. And we had to wait till we got to uh, one car behind the uh, attendant booth in the parking lot to see what the price sign was. And, and we're saying, you want, you know, some people, I don't know why, but they lock their wallet in their trunk. And they lock it when they leave home. I said, boy, used to watch this at the boardwalk all the time. They'd stop at the ticket booth or the parking booth, get out of the car, go get their wallet. So um, you want people to have their money ready when they get to the booth to get these cars in fast. And Great America, to this day, the last time I looked at Great America, still had the same problem. I even told the GM about it once, and they haven't changed it. The sign was so small that you you wait till you're right up to the car, to the booth, and then you got a fish for your wallet you know, or ask the wife to dig the money out of her purse, and so you don't have it ready. The other thing that's cemented for me is I got called to do an uh, interview for a food manager at Marine World. This is before it was, when it was in Redwood City. And the guy who was the food manager was going to be promoted to something else, and he was looking for a new food manager. And at that time, they only had the one main restaurant. They had a lot of f food carts, but one, one main restaurant. And they had just been converted from... Marine World to Marine World Africa, USA, and they wanted to get the Africa theme. And so I go up there, and he's showing me around, and he takes me to the main restaurant. And he says, you know, we've done a good job of incorporating the Africa, USA into the Marine World theme here, and notice how we've got more of a jungle theme on the, on the signs. And in the, in the, you probably read the story, you already know the punchline, but in the restaurant, he had the words hamburger, hot dog written in Swahili on the restaurant signs, uh, on the food signs. And below, in real tiny letters, it would say hot dog, or tiny letters say fries or hamburger. But the big word was written in Swahili. Then he had all this African decoration around the sign, so the sign was cluttered. And plus, he was trying to train his girls, his counter girls, and they were girls at the time, to take the orders in Swahili and call the order into the cooks in Swahili. And then he couldn't understand why service was so slow. <laughs> so I decided that was not my cup of coconut juice, and I didn't take the job. But it was interesting to me that here's a simple thing. It's a sign. You know, maybe you can go ahead and put some, some zebra uh, you know, coloring around the edge of the sign to give a little theme to it. But don't mess up the customer who's trying to, you know, he's got a little Johnny pulling on him saying, I want a hot dog, I want a hot dog. And, you know, mom's trying to read this menu sign and then try to find out what everybody wants and place the order. And, and I, to this day, have no idea why the guy would be so uh, foolish as to, to do that. Now, if you're in a land like, let's say you go to Guatemala or you go to Europe or whatever, and you've got different cultures, you might have your hot dog sign, three of them. 
in three different languages. I can understand that, but not just for the purpose of theming. But So we learned little tricks like that. And like you said about the garbage cans, Warren learned the park stayed cleaner if we kept one garbage can in sight of another. So they could throw it in here or they can throw it in that one up there. And we, you know, we had to put a lot of boxes in the picnic area to accomplish that, those wood boxes, those cardboard boxes. But, you know, it paid off because it made it easier for the guests to keep the park clean for us. And you guys didn't have as much trash to pick up. So...